Please note, this video is meant to be a demo only and there are a lot of details for each technique that you may not be able to see or understand. It is just to give you ideas and this is just a small portion of submission defense out there. There are so many more escapes and variations. Please ask an instructor for help. Submission defense is for common submissions such as hug chokes, arm triangle chokes, bravo chokes, and anaconda chokes were not added because the visual only would not be very helpful. Possible detailed videos for them may be added in the future. When it comes to submission defense, your timing is very critical. You should always know that your best defense is to understand how to not be put in a submission. But if you do get caught with an attack, the faster you react, the better your chances are. When you're caught in a submission, there is such a thing as being too late to defend. That's when you tap. When defending the armbar from the guard, it's very important that you stack your opponent's knees into their face and not try to extend and pull your arm out. When your opponent goes for the armbar, you want to block the arm that he's attacking with your other arm, feed your hand inside their legs, put your hand on their thigh, and start shaking your shoulder really fast so then that way it makes it easier for you to pull your arm out. And a quick counter for when they go for the armbar, if they end up going belly down, is to basically jump over and around your opponent. So when they go for the armbar, they end up going belly down. You take your body, jump right over them around to the other side, so then that way it's harder for them to get the armbar. Everyone should understand the posture up immediately when your opponent attacks for a triangle choke. When they attack for the triangle choke, get your head up and get your hips off of your heels, and then put your hands on the inside of the knee and start shaking the knee out so that way you can open their guard. And when you go to posture up and go to shake their knee, if for some reason you still can't open up their legs, you may be able to create enough space so in that way you can swim your arm back inside and there's no threat for a triangle anymore. An escape that I like to do at times when my opponent has a triangle sunk is I do the tipping escape. So what I do is I take my outside hand and I cover my arm that's on the inside so that way I'm protecting it. I tip my opponent's leg all the way down to the ground then I start walking my body around and I put my knee in their butt and I push really hard. So I'm going to tip them, I'm covering my arm, I put my knee right in their butt and I start pushing really, really hard so then that way it makes it uncomfortable for them. As you're tipping them to the side, you want to put pressure on the inside of their knee, pushing it into you so then that way you're relieving the, the pressure and creating space so you can breathe. Another last resort escape that a lot of people do when they're caught in a triangle choke is they step up to their feet, then they start bringing their opponent's legs a little bit over their head and step their legs around over their shoulders, sit down, extend their legs and their body so in that way they can relieve the pressure and the choke. And if you time their attack right, it's very possible that you could tuck your chin in really fast so in that way they don't get a good grasp on you with the triangle choke and you could pop your head out and then start going around and even work a pass. Another escape that people use successfully, especially those who are bigger, is by basically stacking your opponent's knee into their face. And as you do this, you want to hug around their head, put pressure into them, and drive your shoulder into their face. So you're stacking their knee right into their face, bring your arms around their head, clamp your hands together, and then drive your shoulder right into their face so then that way they open the triangle. If you time your opponent's omoplata attack fast enough to where they can't get their arm over your back, it's very possible that you can jump right over them, get to the other side, and not only defend the omoplata, but also pass their guard. Also, when your opponent goes for an omoplata, if they do not sit up in time, you can put your knee on their stomach, put pressure down with your knee, basically making it uncomfortable, then start walking around, grab their leg for better base, and then pull your arm out as you hip in. If I choose to roll to escape the omoplata, I always make sure I look into my opponent and I do kind of like a log roll, not a regular forward roll, so then this way I can always end up on top and my opponent doesn't end up sweeping me. It's also possible to counter the omoplata attack when you shoot your shin underneath them, basically underneath their butt, and as you do this, you tip onto your hip and you drive your elbow to the ground, and what this does lots of times is it puts your opponents in the turtle position. When your opponent goes for an omoplata, you should always be ready to also defend a triangle choke because this is one of the most common combinations in jiu-jitsu. When they go for the triangle choke, always be ready to shoot your arm back through so then that way you can defend. And a very tricky counter that I actually hit a lot when my opponent goes for an omoplata on me is I do a forward roll, but I kind of rest on my shoulders, and as I'm doing this, I shoot my arm up, pull their arm through, and I go for an omoplata myself so then that way I'm now attacking them. The hitchhiker escape is one of the most common escapes when your opponent goes for an armbar from side control. When your opponent goes for the armbar, you want to make sure you turn your arm up so then that way it's facing 90 degrees on the outside. As you do this, do a sideways back roll so then that way you can escape the position. When your opponent goes for the armbar from the mount, it's also possible to do the hitchhiker escape. It's a little bit harder because he has both of his legs over your body, but you want to make sure you still turn your arm out and then turn your body really low so then that way you can escape the position. 
When my opponent goes for an armbar from the mount, an escape that I do a lot is very similar to the escape for when they go for the armbar from the guard. What I do is, when they go for the armbar, I make sure I protect the arm they're attacking by putting my hand inside the crook of my elbow. Then I put my other hand underneath their thigh. I shake my head out so that way there's no pressure on my face. I kick my legs up and then down so I can get them now in the guard. Then I shake my shoulders really fast so then that way I can escape the armbar. When they go for a Kimura on me, I adjust my body and I put my hand on their hip. As I'm doing this, I'm bringing my hand that they're attacking close to my body and walking it up my chest, which is actually locking them up. I can also do this when they attack from the half guard. I put my hand on their hip and then I walk my arm, my hand up my body so that way I can relieve the pressure of the Kimura. When they attack the Kimura on the top, it's very crucial that you do not let them get their hands locked together. You want to hip your body out, use your legs so then that way you can break the grip off. A quick way to protect your arm when they go for an Americana is to quickly bump them with your hips and your chest so that way you can create space, feed your arm through, grab your own wrist, pull in tight to your chest so then that way you can protect your arm. A basic way to defend an ankle lock is for when they go for the ankle lock, first you want to get their foot off of your hip by pushing down on their ankle. Then you're going to slide your body over their leg, pushing their knee across, get the underhook, and then come up so then that way you can stop the attack. A basic counter to a regular heel hook is to roll with your opponent and not against it. As you're doing this, use your other foot, push it into their butt so then that way you can free your leg out. And if they shoot for a heel hook from the bottom, quickly turn the direction that they're reaping your leg. When they go for a knee bar, you want to make sure you triangle your leg that's being attacked. As you triangle your leg that's being attacked, you want to make sure you try to sit up, get your knees, attack their head, and then sprawl back so then that way you can free your leg. And an important concept to know when your opponent goes for a toe hold is to roll with the toe hold and not against it. You want to make sure you roll with it, and as you're rolling with it, use your other foot to kick their hands off of your foot. A basic defense to the common guillotine inside your opponent's guard is to get up on your toes when they go for the guillotine, put your arm over their shoulder, put pressure into their face with your shoulder, and then quickly put your forearm underneath their neck and then sink back. For most basic cross collar chokes, the answering the phone technique works fairly well. When they go for the choke, shoot your arm inside, then cover your ear, and then start walking your hand around your head so that, that way you can free the choke. Timing is very important when defending the bow and arrow choke. When I feel them going for a bow and arrow choke, I quickly sink my body very, very low, put my hand up on their elbow, push up on their elbow, tuck my head out, and then turn into them quickly. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and email newsletter. Also, please share this video with all grapplers around the world.